Hey, welcome back. It's your boy, Will J. Let's get into some deck brewing shenanigans. Today, I'm going to be covering one of the decks that one of the players, Gerald, brought to the table in our most recent gameplay video. Now, in case you haven't watched that yet, there should be a link in the top right of your screen right now. I work really hard on that video, so I hope you can give it a watch, and yeah, hopefully you find it fun. All right, let's unpack the deck Gerald brought to game night, and it features none other than Millicent Restless Revit. She's a 7-mana value 4-4 Flying Spirit Soldier that costs 1 less to cast for each spirit we control, so technically she can cheat on things like commander attacks. She also has a triggered ability that reads whenever Millicent or another non-token spirit we control dies or deals combat damage to a player, create a 1-1 white spirit token with flying. So she pumps out a small army when we hit, a small army when we get wiped, and that's pretty good resiliency to make sure we can keep the pressure on. The deck we're going to be showcasing today is G -G -G Ghosts! An aggressive spirit tribal deck that wants to go wide, take flight, and beat you into the afterlife. Now Gerald has some pricey cards in this deck, but don't worry, I'll also be suggesting some budget-friendly alternatives for us. I hope you could leave a like and a subscribe because it really helps the channel out. Now, I'll go over our usual themes of ramp, removal, and draw, but then we'll also go over our other themes of ghosts, anthems, resilience, and UBP. First, let's talk about ramp. Azorius isn't really known for ramping out hard, but the low curve of this deck makes it possible for us to get our plan online quickly. Soul Ring, Bobble, and the Signets are easy includes, and Thought Vessel is here because the deck has some potential for some burst draw. Sword of the Animus has gone up in price, but it's really great for decks that love to attack. And while Gerald runs a Sword of Feast and Famine for that untapped goodness, it's practically like an extra turn, it's a little pricey so we can swap it out for other cards like Dowsing Dagger or Sword of the Hearth and Home both of which ramp you as well. We also run our Kaomancer's map, which is a decent white catch-up ramp card that was included in a pre-con, but if you don't have it in your collection, I'm a big fan of Keeper the Accord, which is also a good catch-up ramp card that can trigger multiple times over a game and also isn't as pricey. And finally, since we're looking to be aggressive, Strixhaven Stadium acts as both a mana rock and a finisher. Remember, the stadium gets one point for every creature of yours that hits any opponent. So you don't need to pile up your hits on one guy to take him out, like what you would normally do with Infect. You can keep hitting one opponent that has no flyers to run up the score, then when you're nearing 10, send your guys at another opponent who probably had a bunch of flying blockers, so that even if one creature gets through, you'll be able to knock him out. Despite being in one of the best colors for control, this build isn't running much removal. A couple of terrific counter spells in Arcane Denial and Mana Drain, obviously you can run something cheaper than Mana Drain, an asymmetrical board wipe in Austere Command, a couple of exile based targeted removal spells in Swords to Plowshares and Skyclave Apparition, and that's it! <laughs> While that does seem a little light versus my usual Bruce, it also makes the deck significantly less stressful to pilot. You're here to play spirits, not control the game, and sometimes that can be a really refreshing way to play Azorius. We're an aggressive deck, and interestingly enough, blue rewards aggression. Bident of Thassa is the poster boy for this as the Bident draws us a card for every creature of ours that hits. A slightly toned down version is Curiosity Crafter, a non-spirit that lets us draw cards when tokens hit. Even more fair is Grazilax, another non-spirit that draws us a card for each player we hit. And the most fair version of this is Military Intelligence, a 2-drop that draws us one card whenever we attack with two or more creatures. A couple of value spirits in the deck that help us net cards are Ghostly Pilfer, which lets us draw when it untaps or say when a commander is played, and Ao the Dawn Sky. <laughs> I'm sure I butchered that name. Ao is a 5 mana value 5 4 dragon spirit that when it dies, lets us look at the top 7 of our library and play any number of non land permanents with up to total 4 mana value for free. Did I mention we were playing a low curve? Since this deck wants to go wide, then we also run a couple of Haymaker draw spells in Skull Clamp and Kindred Discovery, which lets us draw whenever a spirit enters the battlefield or attacks. To get our aggro game plan going, we're gonna need spirits. Lots of them. Mausoleum Wanderer, Mothless Changeling, and Spectral Sailor are all one-drop evasive spirits that can get the ball rolling early, with the Wanderer and Sailor having some upside a little later in the game as a counter spell and a mana sink for draw. Dream Shackle Geist, Shackle Geist, and Nebel Gast Herald are spirits that tap down other creatures, which isn't technically removal, but turn cycles can be long in Commander, and buying yourself an extra turn from a giant beater or removing a blocker, that can be pretty huge. To help us go wide faster, Hanged Executioner makes an extra body when it enters the battlefield, and he can be exiled later on to take out a bigger threat. 
while Geist of St. Raft is a hexproof spirit that creates an angel whenever he attacks. Spirit Bonds lets us pay 1 white to create an extra 1-1 spirit when a non-token enters the battlefield under our control, and Donald Herald of Wings also gives us an extra spirit that are outright copies of any non-legendary flyer we play, albeit once per turn. Our opponents can also help us make spirits with Haunted Library, which lets us pay 1 to create a spirit when a creature of theirs dies, as well as Haunting Imitation, a 3-mana value sorcery that reveals the top card of each player's library, and essentially gives us a spirit copy of every creature revealed that way. It's not reliable, but the randomness is fun. Lastly, and this is again one of the pricier pieces, this deck also runs Anointed Procession which lets us double our token production. It's a really powerful card in token decks and a pretty unique effect in non-green builds. An alternative we can run though is a card like Rabble Rousing. And while it's not as good, it does net us multiple tokens. Although the main caveat is that it makes citizens that don't have evasion and they don't have spirit synergies. While making spirits is spooky, Anthems are what makes them scary. Supreme Phantom, Drug Soul Captain, and Patrician Geist have Lord effects that give our other spirits a boost. And Drug Soul Reinforcements can essentially give our spirits plus 3 plus 3 if we spread the love. Empyrean Eagle gives all our spirits and other flyers plus 1 plus 1. And Beckoning Will o' the Wisp is a neat little card that really helps in unseating an arch enemy. Rally the Ranks and Radiant Destiny are enchantments that care about creature types and gives our spirit a small boost which can all add up. An Intangible Virtue is an anthem that cares about the tokens that we hope to flood the board with. A couple of bombs as anthems is Eldrazi Monument, which gives our team indestructible along with a plus one plus one. And Mirror Entity, which can turn all our small creatures into base XX creatures and is a finisher in this deck. While Millicent does refund us if we ever get wiped, it's still important to run cards that can give our board a little more protection and resilience. Rattle Change is a flash spirit that gives hexproof. It can essentially double like a budget Vidalcan orrery for most of our creatures. Rescuer Twinga bounces an important creature back to our hand when it enters the battlefield, letting us dodge targeted removal. And Spectral Shepherd lets us do this as an activated ability. Unsettled Mariner makes it hard to target us and our guys by acting as an anthem that gives Ward 1. And Kira Great Glass Spinner outright counters the first spell that targets any of our creatures, which if you've played against the Neon Dynasty Jingataxias, is a hell of a thing to overcome. These cards don't protect against board wipes though, so this deck packs Guardian of Faith to phase our creatures out which also lets us save our tokens. It also runs the all-powerful staple Teferi's Protection, and honestly, there aren't much cards that are a good proxy for Teferi's Pro, mainly because I can't think of another card that matches its ability in saving our board and also saving our life. But if you were to focus mainly on board saving, I am a fan of March of Swirling Mist, which lets us phase out multiple creatures without having to hold up too much mana. If we do get got though, we can slowly rebuild with Angel of Flight Alabaster, which returns the spirit from our graveyard to our hand during our upkeep, or bounce back immediately with Storm of Souls, which returns our whole team into play and with many of them being 1-1s, doesn't seem like the harshest drawback. For UBP, there's a mix of fun spells this deck is running, but let's start with being responsible. Remorseful Cleric is a graveyard hate spirit, which is always important to carry. Restoration of Aganjo is a good value card because it makes sure we hit our next land drop, it reanimates, and it can later produce tokens. Nothing flashy, but it's a 3 for 1 and it just helps in making things run smoother. Windborn Muse and Ghostly Prison can hopefully protect us from crackback even if we tap out to all out attack. And Swiftfoot Boots is a good haste enabler that lets us keep the pressure with a nice side benefit of granting hexproof. Millicent's token production is nice and steady value, but having more than one copy of it? That's when it gets really out of hand. Spark Double and Renekas' Vile Duplication make this possible. I swear this Vile Duplication is such a boss card and it's only like $2 now. Go pick up a copy if you don't have one yet. Another clone star card with upside is Mirror Hall Mimic, which lets us copy any creature in the battlefield, which is fine, and then its disturbed backside gives us some extra value by pumping out copies of a creature during our upkeep. Finally, Catilda Dawnheart Martyr is a creature that cares that we're amassing spirits, and if we get things rolling, both sides of her can be a closer. Using our playability matrix from our power level video, which if you haven't watched is an alternate take on power levels as it relates to casual gaming, I'd say Gerald's Ghosts deck runs a fairly consistent offense with its high spirit creature count, draw effects, and multiple redundancies. It's also pretty efficient because it likes to run low to the ground, so it's almost never mana screwed. But its main win con of honest combat damage with anthems or using the Strict Saving Stadium is good but not great. 
I'd grade it around a B or B- for offense. I know it wasn't able to really get lift off in the featured game video, but I'd say that's not likely to happen often given how it's built. However, the deck is a little light when it comes to defense, and while it is running some of the most efficiently costed removal out there like Mana Drain and Swords, the lack of consistency does hurt it. It's a deck that likes to swing out and think about the consequences later, and so I'd give it a D, maybe a D plus on defense, putting it as a good deck to run in a mid-power casual setting. If you have your own staples lying around that you want to mix and match in this build, then feel free to do so and here's the shell that you can refer to to help guide you. 9 ramp spells, 5 removal, 8 draw, 13 ghosts, 11 anthems, 9 resilience, 9 EVP, and 35 lands. And that's it for this episode. Thanks again Gerald for letting me feature your deck as well as for agreeing to play on cam. I bid you good luck in the next game, sir. Now if you want your deck featured, while I don't think YouTube allows for private messages, you can always email me and my email is just in the description down below. Or leave a comment. Hey, I enjoy those as well. <laughs> Many thanks to those who have liked and subscribed the videos. Hopefully I won you over today. And with that, stay inspired friends and I'll see you next time.